Welcome back everyone to another episode of Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Heath. I'm Kyle. And this is Low Budget High Hopes. On today's episode, we have the wonderful Rolling Rock 25 ounce beer. A very, very good college staple, I'd say. It's a, uh, it, it's definitely pretty smooth from what I remember. Um, it's definitely been a long while since I've had it, so it's kind of nice to have a refresher of what we're dealing with here. Um, you want to go ahead and read some facts? I'll crack this open, see how it pours. Sounds good to me. All right. Rolling Rock review. I did not write this myself. I'm reading off of a website called thespruceeats.com. I thought it was a very good in-depth review of what this beer history-wise should be. The decline of a decent pale lager. Rolling Rock was originally a regional beer enjoyed most in the blue collar towns near the Latrobe, Pennsylvania brewery where it was once brewed. What began as a family owned business in 1939 has been gobbled up one big beer company after another. While Rolling Rock once had a premium, even semi-craft beer status, enjoyed as a refined light American lager, opinions have since changed. This brand is a perfect example of how the goal of big brewers did not meet the standards of longtime brand loyalists. So in short, this beer was once known as a working man's high class brew, and it almost gained status of a semi-craft beer. But as it became more popular, big brands bought this beer out and it basically became a low budget mass produced beer. And now we're going to do our initial sniff smell of it and uh, we're going to just take a look at the foam and the body of the beer. So, After he poured this beer out when I was reviewing beer facts, um, the foam was reaching the top of the glass. So as you can imagine, probably a nice solid inch and a half foam head of beer. Once again, it wasn't as bright white as the last beer that we reviewed, the Natty Daddy. Everyone remembers that. It's a little bit, a little bit less white than that beer, but still a very, very pale white color. All right, as far as smells go, getting a lot of corn once again. Um, very malt forward. Very malt forward. Definitely getting that. Kind of has a, a, a good sweetness to it. Like it's not overpowering. It's like there, but it's not crazy. It almost smells like the perfect, perfect amount of sweetness in a glass, so I'm very excited about this one. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. All right. Right off the bat, very smooth. Very smooth, very re um, very refreshing. There's almost like a little bit of a lemon quality underneath the pine. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a great summer beer. Um, me and my grandfather actually, when he was telling me stories of Woodstock and how Cheeseburgers used to be 25 cents as a meal back in the day. We used to enjoy this on the porch together. It brings back a lot of good memories. That's awesome, man. Um, it's really nice to see that you know, family stays together and have good memories like that. Um, what I'm really shocked about is when we smelled it, we got a very malt forward smell, but you don't really taste it. Um, you mainly just taste more of like a corn rice type of flavor. Um, and like you said, a little bit of that pine is in there. But I mean, other than that, it's very smooth. Um, it doesn't really bite at you. Uh, I mean, this is pretty cheap. We spent uh, like what one seventy a dollar seventy on this can. Um, I is enough for the both of us to fill our glasses up. Yeah, I mean, one dollar seventy cents. I can't complain with it so far. I can't. I mean, everything's going smooth for now for a cheap beer. <laughs> it's a very light, crispy beer. It's very cheap, but it's definitely a lot better than the Natty Daddy, in my personal opinion. It's only four and a half percent, so it's not nearly as heavy. This is kind of a jack of all trades beer. It's not very malt forward, even though it smells like it. Not very, uh, not too hoppy, uh, not too corn heavy. It's just kind of just right in all the different aspects of what a beer should be. Yeah, it's like a uh, perfect balance almost. It's almost like a um, land shark kind of flavor, if I yeah, dare say so myself. In a way, yeah, kind of like a cheaper land shark in a way, but not in a bad way. Um, and I, I feel like. 
you would probably use these type of beers or you know rolling rock, rolling rock in particular for like fishing or if you're like mowing the lawn the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're on a Ryan lo uh, mon lower or you're working on your car uh, going fishing stuff like that I think these would be the beers that you just have by your side just to have um, it is pretty refreshing uh, refreshing surprisingly enough um, yeah no complaints so far none whatsoever we'll see how it tastes warm yeah, here we go let's <laughs> see what happens in 15 minutes All right, 20 minutes gone by. <laughs> These things are uh, very warm, once again, with the lovely sunshine. I think it's been more like half an hour now, but that's fine. Sometimes people forget to set timers or they didn't, you know, who knows what happened. Life um, happens. But now we're at what I consider the gauntlet <laughs> is testing the beer while it's warm to see if it competes, if it, you know, when it's cold. Sometimes you're out with your friends, camping, having a good time. You sit the beers in the chair, do a little fishing, you come back. Oh, wow, there's a beer in my chair. You come back there, you want to take a sip, but how drinkable is it? Let's find out. Still super smooth. Definitely still holds up. Um, it's super it, light. It, it's still super light body. Um, the main difference really is like the flavor did change a lot. I mean, of course, you know, different properties of matter when you're going from cold and hot. Um, but you get more of that like ricey, weedy kind of taste. Um, less sweet. Yeah, it's definitely say. less definitely sweet. The bitterness comes out a little bit more. It, it just feels like a little hint of the corn than what it was earlier. It kind of like went from sweet to bittersweet out of nowhere. Um, but I mean, still, it, I think it's still drinkable. Still highly drinkable. I mean, if I'm out with my buddies and we're fishing and whatnot, I got this and it's been sitting for 20 minutes in the heat, I still, still drink, drink it. it. Yeah. So we totally agree. Super smooth, super refreshing. Rolling rock. Heck yeah. What else need to be said? And that wraps up another episode. Well, not yet. We gotta do our bottle caps. Oh. So, you gotta rate the can here, buddy. Well, let's, re let's rate the beer first. All right, fair enough. What do you think about the beer? From one to 10 bottle caps, your honest opinion overall. I'm gonna go 4.25 bottle caps. It's a solid beer, a lot better than the Natty Daddy. Um, highly drinkable, it's a fun beer. It's nice and light, good for parties. You're not gonna get super messed up. You're not gonna ruin the party. It's a fun beer to have and 4.25 bottle caps. Yeah, what about for you, bud? I, I definitely have to agree with some of your opinions there. I mean, it's definitely still easy to drink. Um, it, obviously, it's on the cheaper end. That's why we're doing these episodes. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably, I probably give about a four, four bottle caps out of uh, ten. I mean, you know, it's nothing stellar, but it's definitely like a poor man's land shark in my opinion. Uh, but it's definitely chooses over Natty Daddy any day. <laughs> uh, never again. If you're at the store and you see Natty Daddy in this, please go with this. Drink two of these instead of a Natty Daddy. You'll yeah. have a better time. <laughs> Save yourself. Your head won't hurt. And your friends won't judge you. Yeah. And your liver will thank you. All right, so I guess that uh, wraps up this episode. Anything you want to add, Tom? Wow, we're having a good time. Like, like, share, and subscribe. Post a comment. Make sure to vote in our poll that's coming up. And uh, have a great day. Hope